Good afternoon, good evening, this beautiful Sunday morning. Um, well, not Sunday morning, Sunday evening. Um, it is time for me to have a discussion. Um, a lot of things going on, and I just want to be clear with you all because I'm a little tired and it's wearing, it's wearing me thin. And I just want to be completely honest because I think people are getting the, you know, they're not getting the full story and they're, you know, stuff is getting, you know, construed to make it sound like it's something. And I, I don't think a lot of us have allowed certain people to narrate the stories and stuff that's going on um, right now. Let me tell you, first of all, I have no beef with anyone. To be honest, I'm quite really, really busy and I just don't have time to be in beef with anybody. I want everybody to win. I want everybody to win. I love what everybody does. There is no one I hate. I can't, there is nobody, well, there's a couple folks who coon in front of cameras I can't stand, but that's another story. But I, I don't, Justin J doesn't hate anyone. Um, I just don't. I, I just don't have time. And I keep saying it because I really don't. There are times, and somebody told me the other day, Justin, you should keep a clock on how much, you know, work you do um, and see, you know, how, how this is versus, you know, you having a normal job, um, a regular paying job or something. And, you know, those of you who are aware, I quit my job back in November. When was that? October or September? Um, I just had a premonition. And I just, you know, premonition. I felt like um, the girl off Charmed. And I just felt... Yeah, it's time for me to just do something else because I'm unhappy and I'm miserable and I don't like being miserable and I love doing what I do. I just didn't have time to grow, grow my brand. A lot of things was going on and things were looking up for me when I moved to Atlanta. Let me tell you something. I made a lot of, lot of sacrifices last year. A lot. Um, Funk and Ineva told me two, three years ago when we first were introduced to each other um, and he saw my video about him. He told me that I should move to Atlanta. That I, you know, you know, sometimes you just gotta sacrifice things and move on, and do what you gotta do. Do what's in your heart and what's in your brain, because your heart is your brain. To be honest, your heart doesn't think, but your brain does. Um, and I didn't want to believe him. I didn't want to believe him, and I just what felt myself miserable in a job that I just hated. Um, I ended up moving to Atlanta. You know, I said, you know what, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move, so I let go of my apartment. I told him, girl, I'm not finna, I'm just gone. I'm just gone, girl. Y'all just, I, I, you know, let's work out a deal because I, I need to leave. I need to leave. Um, a couple of things, just things just kept happening bad. As far as me, I was supposed to deploy and go to Afghanistan. I had volunteered. That didn't work out for me. So I just felt like something was just on me. So I just finally left Memphis and I came to Atlanta. And those of you know, when I, you know, moved out of my apartment, I moved in with a friend to save some money so I could move to Atlanta. That didn't go as expected, um, as, as planned. And I had to roll with the punches. I had to move in with my mama um, for a couple of weeks, you know, kind of humble myself for the beginning of a new era. And, you know, here we are now, March, and it's been almost a year since I made these, because, you know, a year ago I had a, a meet and greet at, um, what was the name of that place? Yard House in Atlanta. And I saw 30 to 40 people came just to see me. People had flown in, drove from different cities to come see me. And I was overjoyed. And it made me say, you know what? I have a chance. So then I said, you know what? I got back home and I said, this is going to affect me leaving. Because I really did not even have the money to even come to Atlanta. I didn't even have the money. I opened up a credit card that I, and, I, and, I and I swiped and I swiped and I swiped. And to be honest, still, still to this day, I'm still paying off some of that stuff from last year. Yes, honey, yes. Because that trip was kind of expensive considering that I did not have that type of money at that time. And I still don't because even the little stuff, the little extra I get, I just reinvest it in myself and my brand. Like, I'm not around here wearing sickening ass clothes and sickening ass shoes and all that type of stuff. I, I just, I feel like... My brand is more important at this point. Child, I don't even have pictures on my wall in my apartment. I just don't. I don't even have a big screen TV in my living room. I just don't. I, all the extra money that I've made, I've been reinvesting in stuff. Like this stuff that I'm doing costs a little money. So I was honored to, you know, participate in the blackout last year. Although all the, you know, things that happened and things that were said, you know, I still am going. And I appreciate that. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience. I got a chance to be on the Scorpion show. 
That was really, really good. I enjoyed that. Did a video with Kevin. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. I enjoyed that. Instagram had kind of blew up as far as the shit about charade shit. That was funny. And just got a chance to meet a lot of encouraging people who encouraged me to keep pooching through and keep doing what I'm doing. So fast forward, it's March um, 2016. Um, I've decided not to attend the blackout this year. I wish them the best. I wish them the best and I hope they do whatever they want. You know, whatever they want to do, I, I I think it's going to be, you know, a, an amazing event. And I'm not, it's no shade. And if even you catch it, it's just all, you know, fun and games to me, to be honest. But I think people think that because I did this main event, ATL, um, I think people are saying, well, you shading up, what's not, I'm just going to be honest, I'm not going, to, I'm not attending. After, um, and, and, and it's no shade, it's nothing, I'm just going to be honest with you all. After conversations and stuff of me being on the phone and, and giving ideas and stuff, and I felt like I was, you know, were not my ideas were not being heard and people were not listening to me and people were not featuring me, I just moved on about my business and I said, you know what, I can't participate. And I was already in the talks of creating my own event and something to it. So, I, you know, and that's when I reached out to Adrian back in, what was it, September, and I said, when he came here, I said, Adrian, we, you know, we can, we should do something like a podcast or something together. And we had talked and sat on it for a while. Um, and Adrian is my good friend. Uh, me and Adrian have really grown. I've known him for three years. But, um, you know, after conversations and meetings and stuff that I have had, you know, on the phone conversations and stuff, I just felt like nobody was interested in me as far as, the, you know, the blackout and there's no shade to nobody and i know y'all said no it's not like that and all that type of stuff to the youtubers on the phone but personally i just felt like nobody would listen to me when i said you know let's not having having in las vegas let's have it in atlanta because we need to perfect it we need to do that i felt like people just did not want to hear what the fuck i said and maybe that's because i come off as an asshole i'm cocky i speak my mind maybe it's because of all that and that's you know that's my problem or whatever you want to say you know, maybe, you know, that's something I have to deal with. But nobody listened to me when I gave advice as far as having a website, doing this and doing that. And if we're going to sell tickets, what is the purpose of us giving, you know, $200? Are we going to get our money back? Stuff like that. I, and I felt like I was the only one. So when you're the only one, you already looked at it as the messy one. You know, the one who think they, they just got it all and all that type of shit. You know, and you're the only one talking, it looks like an asshole. I, and I said, you know... Maybe there needs to be other people that are over the finances and stuff. We need to delegate, you know, stuff. And I felt like I was talking to myself. And I reached out, and I don't think if Kevin called me or I called him, and we talked about it, I said, Kevin, they're just not listening to me, and I just don't know what to do. And he's like, no, it's going to be okay, you know, da, da, da. And Kevin just, you know, kind of just, you know, blew it off and all that type of stuff. But it bothered me. And I was just like, you know what? I don't have the time and energy to put my all into something that I'm not even the headliner for. And I'm just going to be honest, and this is no shade. To be a headliner, to be the person in the front, you have got to be somebody very relevant. And that is no shade at all. If you want to be the front of the center of some shit, you have to got to make sure your shit is on point. And I felt like everybody that was participating, shit was on point. So there was no need of no headliner. You got folks who do videos every once in a while. People are not dedicated and all that type of stuff as much as other people. So I just thought that this whole headliner thing was just, it was too much for me. And then I felt whenever I saw promotion or pictures and stuff, I was always in the bottom. I was always on the side. I was just like, why am I? And I did it. I, it's not necessarily about me being caring about being being in the front. It was just the fact that I worked too hard. I worked too hard, and I just don't. I think I deserve a little bit more credit. And I was just like, why am I sitting up here? Put it, gonna do all this work, find this venue, find this, do this, find sponsors, do all this type of shit, and then you turn around, and you know, you barely even see me. You barely even see me. Like, girl, it was just crazy. So I just said, you know what? I just stopped messaging. I just stopped responding. I just deleted the Instagram shit. And I was like, I got to focus on some other stuff. I just don't have time for that. Nobody once reached out to me and said, Justin, I haven't seen you message anything. I haven't seen you say anything. Is everything okay? Because in all honesty, half of their ass don't give a fuck about me. And that is okay. 
That is perfectly fine with me because I peeped it out how y'all be skipping over shit and not liking shit. I peeped it out, girl. I'm fine. I'm fine. But then when I created my own event, people reached out to me and said they felt like they were shady, da 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 da. Y'all were not featuring me. The last couple of what's the name y'all put up didn't even have my picture in it. So why was that? Why is it so surprising? To be honest, I don't have to call anybody and tell anybody that I'm doing an event and all that type of shit. I just don't have to. I, I'm my own brand. I don't have to. I have to do what's best for Justin J and, and me growing. Um, so that's the, that's just what happened. So all this conversation stuff going, and I'm gonna address everything, huh? I'm, I'm going to address everything. I'm gonna move on by my business because I start Monday. I got shit to do. So, there was a conversation with the Michelle and Funka Dineva situation had popped up and folks were commenting on folks' YouTube channel. Da 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 this. You gonna say this? You gonna talk about this? Let me, I'm not gonna talk about it because I know mo both of them personally, okay? I don't shit where I sleep. I just don't. Now, I roast the dog shit out of Sheree. I roast the dog shit out. I done roast plenty of folks. I even roasted some couple of YouTubers and stuff. But, this is somebody who kind of laid the groundwork for me and what is Justin J today, okay? So, two or three years ago when no YouTuber or anybody who knew about me or was sharing my stuff or even hated me or knew who the fuck I was, um, was slick ignoring me, Funk and I even saw a video about him and he liked it. He could have paid this shit dust like he do other stuff. And he reached out to me, put it on the website, shared it, all the type of stuff, gave me a thousand something subscribers. I then took what little I had and made it what it is today. I would have never thought that a bitch would be coming from the fucking park bench in Memphis to where I'm at now. I'm very happy. A lot of things have happened for me, and it's been a tough journey. It's been a tough road, and I have shared all that with you all. I've talked about, you know, all this stuff that I have been through, all the things that I have been through in life because I'm not ashamed of it. I'm just like regular, like you all. That's why I love when Lady Mika made that video and she just said, you know, that we're not celebrities because I don't have it like that. I'm not trying to, you know, necessarily get a million dollars, but if, if it happens, so be it. If I get a TV show, so be it. All this type of stuff. So I'm just seeing, you know, comments and stuff from, you know, people. And let me tell you something. A lot of subscribers, and I love how It's Rocks, It's for Rocks put up this Instagram and said, I'm not addressing this shit. It's not because I'm scared. It's because I know what beefs do. And I've always said, It's Rock is one of those people, she does this as a hobby. She loves what she's doing. But she has a real job and real kids and all this type of stuff. Like, she don't have time to play. She got real bills. So she don't have time for all that bullshit. And I love that about her. You know, me. I don't think me and her had the best relationship. I mean, we still don't have the best relationship now, but we're cordial. And I fucked with her. I fucked with Ashley Miller. I fucked with a lot of these folks. And I respect and I see them from their work. But at the same time, um, I just think some people were never featuring me and the fact that I'm here, you know, it's just like, okay. I, I, and you know what? I'm not going to say it's any jealousy or any type, type of thing because it is this whole unity thing. It's not what you think it is. Um, we're just human beings and we're all kind of fighting for some attention and stuff. And some people get more shine than others. There's not one time that people have got on TV shows. They, some folks have been on Love and Hip Hop. The Scorpion show was on Love and Hip Hop, um, after after show and me considering that I know Funker doesn't even and I wasn't you know he knows those folks and I wasn't that didn't bother me too much of course it was in my ear but it didn't bother I want to see everybody grow and do what they do but I think this whole stuff that's going around is just like why you didn't address Funker doesn't even and, and talk about that with his situation with Michelle why you didn't address him and the whole um rich white woman tour I'm not going to talk about a friend that I'm cool with. I'm just not going to do that. I'm just not going to do that. I don't give a fuck what they do. They can take a shit on TMZ and you won't hear me say shit about it on Instagram. I'm just not going to do it because at the end of the day, at this point in my career and what I'm doing, there is no need for me to talk about steady plug people names and stuff to get views and clicks for two, three hundred dollars. It's just not worth it. It's just not worth it at the end because there's more this person can do for me in my career later down the road than um, what's the name? And you wonder why some of these folks have plateaued and they can't grow no more than where they at. I wouldn't give a damn if Funk and I even pissed on YouTube and talk about it. You won't hear me say shit about it because motherfucker, you best believe, I'm going to tell you right here, I'm loyal. I'm not going to talk about this shit. I'm just not going to. Now, if me and him fall out and we don't talk, because goddamn it, we didn't talk for a whole month, to be honest. Okay? He was busy doing his shit out busy. I didn't talk about that shit. I'm just not going to. It's just not going to happen. 
Okay? It's just not my friends, me and my friends then my close friends that have fallen outs and shit. And I'm not talking about them and saying anything about that. I'm just not one of those people that get on Instagram posting any type of shit. I'm just not gonna do it. And when the whole situation happened with Funk Dundee, I didn't even text him and say shit. He already knows that the folk talk shit about him. I'm not gonna be the one that that brings him mess. I'm just not going to do that shit. It's no point. It's no point. I don't like folks to do that shit to me, so I'm not definitely not gonna do it to him. Now I'm interested for anybody who wants to attend the main event ATL. ATL, that's June the 11th, 2016. I highly encourage you to go on the website right now and purchase you some tickets, okay? Okay, buy you a ticket, buy your friend a ticket and come. This is open to, you know, the public. Anybody can come. I said something that you may have think that was shaded to you. I want to reach out and apologize because it, it should not come across as like that. I'm Justin J, and that's all I got. The King of Reeds rocking a He Is Me shirt, okay? And He Is Me is my stand for my brand. But, you know, it might not be for the person who has it. But that's all I got. I'm going to continue on with my breakfast. Sit my mimosa. And I'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.